Welcome to Rapid Fire Rundown. Today, we're going to be discussing the Shadow Systems MR920 and why I feel the MR920 and Shadow Systems pistols in general provide a great value for the average consumer looking to get into Glock 19s or Glock 19 adjacent firearms while also decking them out, changing triggers, sights, adding comps, lights, lasers, slide serrations, everything. The MR920 is quite a fascinating pistol. I think it offers a very unique place in the marketplace at this time. And today, I'm going to be singing a lot of its praises. Now, I do have a history with this handgun. The first video on my channel is actually a Roland Special build, which is this right here. For those of you that don't know or haven't watched, a Roland Special is more so just a comp to Glock 19 with a dot, a light, magwell, everything. It's supposed to bridge the gap between a self-defense pistol and, I guess, a pistol caliber carbine. But anyway, back to the MR920. Um, the MR920 offers a lot of advantages to the Glock platform, with some disadvantages. And like I said, uh, this handgun really did start my love and adoration for modding out Glocks. This is a 43X. I have a video on this. I've got a comp, I've got a light, I've got a dot. It's kind of like a mini roll and build, if you will. Um, I don't go crazy when it comes to modding my firearms. I try to keep them, if they're OEM, fairly stock. Uh, trigger stock. Everything inside this frame is completely stock. The slide is stock minus this compensator. But many people, if you go to r slash Glock mod or Instagram or Facebook or whatever have you, a lot of people like purchasing a Glock and then immediately dumping a lot of money into it. Is that necessarily wrong? I don't think so. But um, for those of you that do enjoy uh, making $2,000, $3,000 Glocks, you notice that by the time you finish modifying your Glock 19, you really do have a completely different firearm. Now, that is what Shadow Systems comes in and tries to fix. They try and give you all those upgrades from the factory that you would do to a Glock firearm without having to replace the entire thing. This does come at a slightly higher price than a Glock 19, but not by much. Like I said, this is a very economical option. So, with all that being said, let's actually get into a review of the firearm. Instead of going tip to butt, which I think a popular YouTuber may do, I'm going to go butt to tip. Okay. We're going to start off with the less significant details of the firearm. First of all, uh, you'll be happy to see that this not only comes with a magwell, which is a addition that many people opt to purchase for their Glock handgun, but this grip module is quite the fascinating upgrade over the Glock platform. Many of you do not like the Glock grip angle. The Glock grip angle is actually pretty severe. The 1911 is a very naturally pointing firearm. The Glock uh, is a little bit more severe and because of that can actually cause wrist pain to a certain degree, but also it's just less natural to point shoot or just shoot in general. Many people struggle with that grip angle. What Shadow Systems has done, and I'm gonna post a picture on the screen, but this back strap right here is completely interchangeable with, to my knowledge, three different back straps that they have. One of which is the Glock back strap, which is my preferred back strap that I have right here, but also a much more shallow 1911 angle, and then a in-between angle that is probably more adjacent to like a SIG or many other polymer firearms. Um, if you don't enjoy the Glock grip angle, which has its benefits, like I said, a severe grip angle can reduce a recoil. Um, I don't think that's ever mathematically been proven, but regardless, you have the ability to change that out to something that's more comfortable for your hands. This is a massive pro for some people. A lot of people, you tell them about Glocks and they immediately say, um, hey, I love Glocks. I'd love to get into Glocks, but I just can't deal with their grip angle because I've been shooting 1911s for so long. This remedies that issue. This right here, in my opinion, uh, is, is the price for remission of loan, right? This is a massive problem for many, many people trying to get into Glocks. Now, Magwell, grip angle, going up the slide, or up the frame rather, we have a undercut, right? 
this undercut right here allows you to get a very high purchase on the firearm. You can see that my finger kind of digs into that undercut. Glock, this 43X, I think with our slimline pistols, they actually started doing this more recently, but older Glocks don't have as severe undercut, if an undercut at all. I can get pretty high on this firearm. This MR920, I can get my hand really up in there. This is going to aid in recoil control. Um, a bore axis, uh, the bore axis of the firearm really does decide a lot of the recoil mannerisms of the firearm and being able to get your hand as high up that frame as possible is going to reduce that recoil. Okay. It's a small touch. It's also for comfort. Um, is it the end of the world? No, but it's a nice, uh, it's, it's a nice bonus. Uh, Shadow Systems definitely did their research when they created this firearm. Moving up, we have the trigger. The trigger's interesting, guys. The trigger, for those of you that have shot Glocks or many polymer-framed handguns, you'll know that triggers, striker fire handguns, triggers aren't always the best. This is no different, but it's also very unique. And it's very hard for me to explain. I recommend you go to a gun store and feel this trigger before you purchase this firearm. The trigger on the MR920, I'm going to attempt to show it to you, is extremely soft, mushy in a way, but extremely soft and has a very light pull. Now by contrast, let's look at my 43X right here. We're all clear. Check out this trigger. Just a little bit of take up, but then I hit a clear wall and then I have to put a lot of pressure into that wall to break. I love Glock triggers. I think you really need to want to shoot your target to pull the trigger. And furthermore, I'm really accurate with these. Um, I just like how they feel. They're no 1911 trigger, but they're doable. The Shadow Systems MR920 is in a very unique position where there is a lot of mush, 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 and then almost no wall whatsoever. But there are benefits to that, okay? Um, the benefit to that is when I am shooting this handgun 50 yards at the range, or 100 yards, I've made many 100-yard shots with this gun. When I'm shooting this handgun at the range at long distances, because there is not a very pronounced wall, I am able to, I'm going to try and show you guys, I am able to take up that creep, and my hand doesn't or my, my finger doesn't jank the gun in any direction. Like a lot of people have that issue with blocks. Uh, they shoot low and left, right? The MR920, I feel like it doesn't have that problem because it's just a really smooth trigger pull with no real defined wall. Um, it's not good, but it's not bad. It's just unique. Um, is this better than a 1911 trigger? Hell no. Is it better than a Glock trigger? Hell no. I think the Glock is a more pronounced one. I think it arguably feels better. But this trigger, for whatever reason, makes me more accurate because of its less defined wall. Um, if you buy a Glock and immediately upgrade the trigger to like a disconnector or whatever shoe, um, this is probably a better factory option just to buy from Shadow Systems. Uh, on a secondary note, a lot of people, they really dislike the Glock trigger shoe. Um, I don't dislike it. It doesn't really press into my finger that much, unless I'm putting 10,000 rounds through the weapon that day. But who's got the money for that? Um, this trigger shoe is really comfortable, guys. This is by absolutely more comfortable than the Glock trigger shoe. Um, and I would say put this in all my Glocks, but I care about reliability. And I don't really feel like changing out OEM parts. So the trigger, we had a lot to talk about. It's good, though. All right, now we're going to move to the left side of the frame. Um, pretty simple. This has a rail for lights, lasers. The TLR-7A um, actually fits perfectly under here. If you are trying to make a concealed carry build, I really recommend the TLR-7A. Ditch the comp, put a dot on, and you have a mighty fine handgun choice. That's kind of roughly what that would look like, and I'll have videos on the screen. I think of myself shooting that TLR-7A. So, moving up the frame... We didn't really miss anything. Moving on to the slide. The slide is um, the slide is where things get really interesting. Now the frame has a lot of great benefits, right? The back strap and the trigger, um, they have their own merits, but the slide is really where a lot of the savings come into place. Let's start back here. 
the MR920 slide. First of all, this is uh, spray painted black. When you get it, um, it goes without saying, I think this is a very attractive looking firearm. If you look on the website, it's almost like a distressed gray finish look. Um, and I love Glocks. I think Glocks are insanely attractive. But the MR920, um, I just think it's a more attractive gun. You know, when you buy this gun, it's either going to have a black barrel or a tin barrel. Um, but regardless of that, just the slide color and the frame color and all the serrations, it just makes for a mean looking firearm. And you know it when you see it. OK, I can't describe it to you other than to say if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. But back to the rear of the slide. Um, first of all, probably should have talked about this. We were talking about the frame. But this right here, this beaver tail. Um, this does extend a little bit farther back, so you boys with really fat hands, uh, you're not going to get as much slide bite. It overhangs by a lot for me, um, but if you have really big hands, you know what I'm talking about. Some people get slices all along the top of their, their thumb or the webbing. Moving back once again, though, we have irons and then the dot. The irons on the MR920 are 100,000% better than Glock. Um, there's a lot of things I can go back and forth on this build and say one is better than the other. They're, they're both better in their own right. Um, these are just better than Glock. Uh, absolutely. These iron sights are actually quite phenomenal. Um, they do co-witness with most dots. Uh, I really like the slant that they provide. They have the little, um, what's it called? Serrations uh, or ant for anti-glare. And then that moves us on to the dot and the modular optic system that they provide. This is probably the largest reason to purchase a MR920 firearm. The MR920, currently I have a HE508T on this firearm, which I will have a review on in the future, but the optic plate, um, I'm gonna post a picture on the screen, but these plastic tabs right here, behind the optic, if you can see it, these actually come out and there's a lot of different screw holes that are going to accept a wide variety of optics. No more, and hopefully more companies start doing this. I know FN is starting to. No more are we going to purchase a, let's say this Glock right here, and have to send it off to a company to get our slide directly milked. This is the future, in my opinion. Red dots are not only the future, they're the now, right? But the optic pattern, plate system, whole system, um, cutting into slide system really should be a thing of the past. Uh, it's pretty archaic at this point. And I think moving to these uh, optic systems with multiple screw points and then little like plastic or metal tabs that you put in um, and allowing just multiple different optic patterns uh, really is the way to go. Um, when you send off your Glock to be milled by, let's say, a wager machine, it's going to cost you minimum 100 bucks. A lot of other companies are going to cost you significantly more than that. This, from the company, allows you to put almost whatever red dot you want. Now, I recommend you go to the Shadow Systems website, as uh, most dots are going to be compatible, but you're not going to be able to put, like, an acro on. Um, you will need to get that milled. Uh, I think there are some Shadow Systems pistols, which actually will accept the acro. I've seen it on Instagram. Um, but regardless, it's not going to accommodate everything, just a vast majority. Now, TrisureCon just unveiled two more optics last week. Um, those are going to mount directly onto this, right? That's something that not many pistols can, can say. Um, furthermore, when we go back to Glock, Glock has the MOS system, right? Raise your hand if you heard good things about the MOS system. You've noticed I didn't raise my hand, right? The MOS system um, has a lot of faults. I have no experience on them, but I've heard a lot of people seeing that they just crack or lose zero or uh, the screws just completely shear off. Um, they're not the best. A lot of other companies have surpassed Glock when it comes to their optic plating system. Um, Shadow System is one of those companies, right? Um, this optic plate alone, once again, is worth the price of admission. All right, forward of the firearm. Normally, this right here is actually a KKM barrel. Like I said, I was going for more of a Roland style build, but the barrel that Shadow Systems comes with is really good and really bad, okay? Uh, first of all, if you're a gangster and uh, you like everything to be gold blinged out, um, I actually had my gun in gold, so I can say that. Um, 
You can buy a tin barrel that comes with the 920. It's actually a pretty attractive spiral fluted barrel to uh, save some weight. Um, otherwise, you can buy your barrel in a black DLC type coating. Now, you will also notice that I don't have any hole cuts up here. That's because there are a couple of different variations of MR920. There are the Combat and the Elite, um, as well as a classic version, um, but this is a Combat. Now, I just don't like holes all over my firearm. I prefer it to have maximum reliability and a giant slide hole. Um, I think there have been studies that show that really it's not going to affect performance whatsoever, but I just don't feel comfortable about potentially a rock getting in here and just seizing up my firearm. How likely is that to happen? Probably not at all. I'm not in war zones very often, so um, buy the Elite if you think it looks cool. And it does look pretty cool. Um, in front of that, or where those slide serrations, or where those hole cuts would be, we have these slide serrations. These slide serrations are also just better than Glock. These slide serrations are not only, um, they're not the most aggressive, but they're fairly deep, and they are a little bit textured, but more importantly, they're angled. And when we are going for our press checks, look at my thumb here, guys. It's going to have that small angle to it, so these scallops, these slide serrations, um, just make manipulating the firearm incredibly easy. Make no mistake, um, I can press check with anything, right? This, uh, this Glock 43X does not have the deepest slide serrations, and I can press check with that very easily. Um, over here, 43X, these are the stock Glock slide serrations, which are absolutely awful. They're so shallow, and the coating... I'm assuming a DLC coating on this is uh, very slick. But even then, I can press check with this very easily. Um, but there's something to be said about just really aggressive and nice angled slide serrations. I consider this better than what most companies are going to offer. Um, another point to Shadow Systems, guys. Now, that basically brings us to the end of the review. On the front of this, um, I have a compensator, but this is for a KKM barrel. Um, do know that from the company, you can actually buy a threaded barrel. So the barrel they provide with your gun will be threaded, so you can throw a compensator on it if you're also a G and want to carry a rolling special build. Um, it's a great build. It's uh, incredibly easy to shoot. Like I said, though, that brings us to the end of the review. Um, now I want to talk about just the shootability of the firearm, right? <sighs> Glocks shoot great. Um... 2011s are kind of the fad nowadays, and the 1911 is my favorite firearm of all time, right? So naturally, I'd like the 2011s. I don't actually own a 2011, so maybe my opinion will be completely changed once I do purchase one, but 2011s are just so in vogue because of how easy they shoot, right? Um, the Shadow Systems MR920, it almost feels like cheating. I have some videos of myself shooting this comped that uh, the gun just doesn't move at all. And I'm not the best shooter, guys. Um, I train a lot. I'm guessing at least, probably doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm going to say 5,000 rounds a year, probably more than that. Um, I'm still not the best shooter on the planet. And with this comped, um, the gun just doesn't move. I can easily just make clover leaves on my targets while doing build drills from concealment. Um, but furthermore, without this compensator, with just a TLR-7A, this gun shoots better than a stock Glock 19. Uh, there is something about the Shadow System's just aggressive grip, and the really nice magwell, and the trigger, and potentially the barrel. I'm not sure what science really goes into me shooting this gun better, but I just do. And if you look at many reviews online of the Shadow Systems MR920 or the DR920 or the CR920, you're going to see a lot of people say the same exact thing. And I can't really tell you why. The only thing I can say is this is a extremely shootable platform. And if you're looking for a concealed carry firearm that offers you a little bit better shooting experience than, minus the comp here, a like 43X or a 43 or an LCP I have off screen, the MR920 might be right for you. Um, I want to talk about some detractors of the MR920 platform. And that is uh, just a couple really quick things. First of all, I want to talk about barrels. 
if you look online for the MR920 or just type in shadow systems, barrels, Reddit, Instagram, whatever have you, whatever platform, forum, AR15.com, if we still use that, um, you're going to see that some people have some issues with shadow systems, barrels, chipping. Um, shadow systems is a very new, relatively new company. Um, they're doing pretty revolutionary things, in my opinion, offering, in my in my opinion, the best clock clone on the on the planet. Um, that being said, they've had some issues with their barrels chipping, um, as well as potentially some customer service issues. I want to explain a customer service issue I had with them, which I want you to make your own judgments on. When I actually purchased this, I spoke with Shadow Systems before I did, and I ordered a um, non-threaded barrel. Uh, and I actually wanted a threaded barrel down the line, and I asked them on the phone, potentially by email, I don't have the email, but I asked them on the phone if I could exchange my barrel for a threaded barrel down the line, and I was actually told that I could, or at least to my knowledge, I was told that I could. Um, anyway, I got the gun, a couple months later, I wanted to put a comp on it and turn it into a Roland build, and they actually told me that they couldn't uh, exchange the barrel. Now. For everyone that just heard that story, you're probably automatically thinking, yeah, no, no shit, they can't exchange the barrel. Why would they? You've been shooting it. Now it's going to give you a new barrel. I totally get it. I'm just telling you that I had a conversation with someone, at least to my knowledge, where I exclaimed, um, or I was told what, what I just mentioned to you. Um, that kind of left a very small, sour taste in my mouth. Um, the other issue is, like I said, these barrels, if you look online, I've seen a lot of chipping issues on Reddit. The Gen 1 tin barrel um, apparently did have a lot of issues from Shadow Systems, and in my, to my small amount of research I've done, um, they have resolved this issue, but the customer service, it can actually be pretty hard to get a hold of them. I have seen a lot of people online telling me that they've had severe issues with their gun, and when they contact Shadow Systems, they have to go back and forth for multiple weeks, or they send their gun and get it back, and it still has the same issue, like the trigger being um, completely dead or way too mushy for their like. Um, I can't verify any of that because um, it's Reddit, right? They could be lying. But regardless, I think customer service is maybe lacking a small amount, um, and I think that Shadow Systems is still going through some initial teething issues. That being said, I really can't um, recommend this pistol enough, guys. Um, this really did start my journey into polymer framed guns being, you know, what they are. Uh, before this, I shot the 226 and the 1911, and I had a Glock 43, but this was my first gun that I really decked out and got a dot for and an X300, and I really cared about, you know, crushing build drills and training, and I have this for a belt set up in the back. Um, I started caring a lot more about kit and preparedness, and the MR920 is just such a great platform that I recommend it to almost everyone. Um, one other thing before I end this video is uh, I just remembered I had never mentioned reliability. Um, reliability with this platform has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I can't think of really any malfunctions that I've had, even with this compensator. This compensator, I throw 115 grain, 124 grain, range ammo. I never have any malfunctions. Before then, I never had any malfunctions. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I personally think uh, break-in periods are a fucking scam. Um, the only guns that should have break-in periods are 1911s that are so tight that they can't even fucking function. And I'm sorry for my bad language, but when a company tells me I need a 500 round, fucking break-in period for a polymer framed gun uh i don't accept that shadow systems doesn't make that claim to my knowledge and regardless i never had a break-in period with this so the reliability on this platform has been utterly fantastic all right so if you have a shadow systems pistol sound off in the comments below i want to hear your experience um, for those of you that are interested in buying the Shadow Systems MR920 or DR920 line of pistols, I wholeheartedly recommend it. Just know that um, you may have some potential like customer service issues and you got to pay attention to that barrel wear. Make sure you like the trigger. Make sure you're putting a dot on this gun because uh, if you're not, you're just wrong. Um, thank you very much for tuning into the channel, guys. More reviews to come. Um, I have a lot of free time the next week, so I'm probably just going to make a video like every single day. Uh, comment down below if you think of anything you want to talk about, and I'd be happy to turn it into a video. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys in the next one.